you all so much for being here today. I'm Bonnie Bowman. I'm a public information officer for the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. We have been assisting the Winona Police Department in investigating this case. Today you'll hear from Winona Police Chief Tom Williams, Fillmore County Sheriff John DeGeorge, and BCA Special Agent in Charge Michelle Prescone. We will have time for questions after they give their prepared remarks. However, I do want to let you know that as of today, we will not be able to comment on any charges or charging decisions. That is something we'll be able to discuss at a later date, but that is not something we will comment on today. I appreciate you respecting that and also respecting the family as we continue moving through this process. At this time, I'm going to invite up Chief White. Good afternoon. I'm Winona Police Chief Tom Williams. We are here today to announce that human remains were found yesterday in Fillmore County. This morning, the Southern Minnesota Regional Medical Examiner's Office performed an autopsy. Law enforcement has confirmed the remains are those of Madeline Kingsbury. <laughs> Unfortunately, while this discovery is not what we were hoping for, we are thankful to be able to bring Maddie home to her family. Her body was found by a Fillmore County investigator on a remote stretch of road off Highway 43 north of Mabel at approximately 1.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Digital evidence collected by investigators led us to this area. It should be noted that the location of Maddie's body was off a low maintenance public roadway and was not property owned by the Frabble family or any of their relatives. The area had been previously searched, but Maddie's body was covered and concealed in such a manner that she was not visible. To say the least, the last 69 days have been frustrating, full of heartache and pain for the family, law enforcement, and the community. But during this time, the family never gave up. Law enforcement never gave up. The community never gave up. We want to recognize that the support from volunteers, public safety professionals, and all the media outlets were instrumental in keeping the blue light shining in order to bring Maddie home. We have said that we will hold anyone involved in Madeline's disappearance accountable, and we are here to tell you that we will hold steadfast on that commitment. We are asking everyone to respect the family's privacy and allow them the time to grieve and mourn the loss of Maddie. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is John DeGeorge. I'm the Fillmore County Sheriff. On behalf of the Fillmore County Sheriff's Office, we offer our deepest consolences, condolences to the family of Madeline Kingsbury. As Chief Williams stated, this is not the outcome we had hoped for, but we are grateful to help bring the search for Madeline to a close. After the conclusion of the large-scale searches led by law enforcement, Fillmore County Sheriff's Office investigators and deputies have continued to search specific areas and follow up on investigative leads on a daily basis. Hundreds of tips have come in to our team from many different sources, and each one of them was thoroughly explored. We are thankful for the partnership and the professionalism of the Winona Police Department, the Winona County Sheriff's Office, the Minnesota BCA, and all of the other supporting agencies. I am proud of our team of investigators and deputies who have kept focused and stayed committed and determined throughout this investigation. Our focus now is to continue to assist the Winona Police Department with every resource available to us to ensure that an accurate and complete investigation is prepared. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle Prestoni. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension. We want to express our gratitude for the incredible partnership that has been allowed by this team to successfully find Dad. The Winona Police Department invited the BCA to help with this case from day one. And since that, every homicide agent throughout the state 
has helped investigate this case. We want to also acknowledge that the, the forensic scientists and the analysts who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes through mountains of evidence to generate leads. We are grateful for the more than 450 tips that have been sent to us. Law enforcement had evaluated each one of them and followed up in as many leads as possible. It's this kind of collaborative effort that brought us here today, able to bring closure to Maddie's family. Thank you. And that concludes our prepared remarks. I'd like to open it up for questions. Would there have been enough evidence to arrest Adam Frabel if Maddie's body had not been found? Unfortunately, I can't comment to that aspect. That would be a charging decision by the prosecution. Uh, where was Adam arrested, and was he arrested without incident? Adam was arrested uh, at a residence in Mabel, and yes, it was, he was arrested without incident. What led to Adam's arrest? Why was he arrested in this case? It was a probable cause arrest that uh, we felt the law evidence to, to make a probable cause referral. Can you do, tell us any more about that? Uh, not at this time. Do you believe that Maddie's body was in the same place this entire time or had it potentially been moved at some point? I can't comment on that. Do you have a pre preliminary cause of death? Uh, not at this time. That was one of the reasons for the delay. Can you tell us more about the digital evidence that led you there? Uh, we actually, to be specific on the digital evidence, no, we've had mountains um, of digital evidence that's related to phone data as well as uh, computer data. Do you think the crime occurred in Winona County or Fillmore County? Uh, I can't comment on that. That would be a charging decision by the prosecution. And why second degree murder and not first degree murder? Again, I can't comment on charging decisions. As, um, Bonnie had stated early on, we will not comment on any charging decisions. Do you believe anybody has helped Adam Frabel? <coughs> Still under investigation, and I'm not willing to comment on that. Can you, you describe what concealed and covered means? Uh, she was uh, in a uh, uh, wooded area off of a gravel road that saw her very safe. You, you said that there was a delay in cause and manner of death. Are they able to determine that? Again, I can't comment on that. That would have to come from the medical examiner's office. You said Maddie's body was found uh, in a public area, uh, but you made mention that uh, it was not found on any land owned by Fravel or, or his relatives. How close uh, is the prop is Fravel's property or Fravel's relative's property to where Maddie was found? The Fravel property is, is within uh, the same area of Fillmore County several minutes of where this is, and I think that's a little specific you want to get. And can you just reiterate how the body was found yesterday afternoon? Uh, an investigator was following up on an electronic a tip related to electronic evidence and checked the area and located metal body. Could you describe the previous searches that had taken place there, how thoroughly that area had been looked at? <laughs> uh, specifically, I can't tell you how thoroughly that area has been looked at, but I can tell you is that we have searched with volunteer teams and with law enforcement um, in that general area as well as uh, most of the rest of that part of the town. But as indicated earlier, uh, there were efforts made to conceal the location of the body. It was not visible from the roadway. Was it something that it, you could walk right by this and, and not see it if there had been searchers there? Was it something that required very close inspection? I don't think that we're prepared to, to comment on that right now. Uh, Sheriff, sure, sure, we talked to some of you out there about the emotional toll this has been on all of law enforcement. Could you talk about that moment yesterday around 1.30 when your deputy called in what they had discovered? What was that moment like for all of you out there? Well, our focus always remains on the job at hand. Uh, so our focus is always going to be and was in that case what we need to do next. Uh, so we, we certainly recognize that this is mentioned uh, that the, the remains were found at 1.30. What time was Adam Frabel arrested? Uh, I think he was arrested, I would say, later in the afternoon. I don't know that. Probably top of my head. Five. 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 
by police officers or sheriffs? Sheriff deputy. What was his demeanor like when he took him to custody? I don't think we're prepared to comment on that right now. It, it went without incident. Was the deputy alone or was this part of any kind of group? No, the deputy was not alone. During the search, I don't. Yeah, during the search, the investigator that found Maddie was by himself. A few weeks ago, a special prosecutor was brought in to kind of help with this case. What's his role going to be moving forward? Again, the uh, response on that is relating to anything with the prosecution is that we are not prepared to comment on that at this time. And how has this case affected law enforcement with such high emotions in town? As uh, Sheriff DeGeorge said, it's, it's taken a lot of uh, effort by everybody, um, and not just law enforcement, but volunteers as well. Um, we know what the task at hand is. Uh, we know that we have a job to do. Everybody stepped up, and um, we did what we, were, what we were required to do, and we will continue to do that um, through the uh, trial stage of this as well. Was, was this the biggest mass search in, in most of your all's careers? Can you kind of just comment on the, on the scope of the last couple months here? <laughs> in my career, I do not recall um, a search of this magnitude. We had uh, uh, probably in excess of 2,000 searchers um, after that initial weekend um, where the volunteers came out, which was coordinated by Winona County Emergency Management Director Van Clare in coordinates, uh, coordination with other emergency management directors. But um, in my 36 years in law enforcement, this has been uh, one of the largest searches that I've ever been a part of. I know you received a lot of tips. Were there tips that, that ultimately were helpful in, in finding what you needed to find? Um, I can't comment on that at this point. <coughs> And what is next in this case? We have to continue to follow up on um, all of the evidence that we have collected to, to date, as well as evidence that was collected yesterday. Um, and we still have to review all witness statements and uh, wait for the results from the medical examiner's office to see if there's any further follow up from that office as well. So what happens with Madeline's two children who gains custody of them? That would be a child protection uh, one of the county uh, and I'm not prepared to speak to that. Is the delay with the medical examiner also leading to the delay in a charging decision? Or does that fall under charging? That decision? falls under charging. Has uh, Frank Holt talked with law enforcement or is he refusing? Um, I'm not prepared to speak to that. It's still an active and ongoing investigation. We have time for a couple more. I know there are a lot of long hours and many, many agencies helping with this to date. Um, does that change at all going forward? I, we still are dedicated, as uh, Sheriff George mentioned, all agencies are dedicated to continue to do what it needs to do uh, to bring this to a successful conclusion. One more. Will the benefit being held for Maddie